there's some people have asked the question of, you know, the way forward, and there are people who are asking the question about what is the way forward in Kashmir, you think? It's a difficult question. No, 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 it's not a difficult question. It's not a difficult question. It's actually an easy question. You know, for nine years, I worked behind the scenes with Prime Minister Manmohan Singh, with Mr. Chitambaram, with Jairam Ramesh, and a large number of people. And we worked silently on Jammu and Kashmir. When we started in 2004, terrorism was rampant in Jammu and Kashmir. By the time we finished in 2013, I went back and I hugged the Prime Minister and I told him that, you know, one of your biggest successes is the end of violence in Jammu and Kashmir. In 2013, we had basically broken the back of terrorism in Kashmir. And we hadn't done it by giving big lectures and big stories. We hadn't done it by giving big lectures and stories. We had done it silently. I'll tell you how we did it. We did it by holding Panchayati Raj elections. We did it by linking women to banks, self-help groups. We did it by running a program of getting young Kashmiris, young people from Jammu and Kashmir and Ladakh, employment in other parts of India, bringing corporates to Jammu and Kashmir, having conversations like, like this with them, and building their confidence. In fact, the, the bodyguard who I went, I, I went to Jammu and Kashmir is standing right here. And my way of measuring progress, I had two metrics. One metric was, how many commercial flights are coming into Jammu and Kashmir? Because the more commercial flights, the more tourism, the more people are comfortable, the better we're doing. And the second was, how close these guys stand to me? <laughs> so if these guys are standing like all around me, we're not doing well. And if they're sort of loosening up a bit, we're doing well. So we went from practically no planes to 50 planes. And I remember one day in 2013, when I was looking around and I was like, where are my security guys? And they had like actually loosened up so much. And there was crowds all around me, 100, 100 200 people, and having a conversation. I went back there in 2014, and this gentleman was there with me. And this gentleman, these are his words, not mine. Let's get out of here right now. Otherwise, we're going to be in serious trouble. Right? What happened between 2013 and 2014, August? I'll tell you. Our strategy was to close the space for terrorists in Kashmir. We basically went in there and said young Kashmiris have two options. They can either be pro-India or they can be against India. Let's close the against India space. Let's find every little space we can find which is not pro-India and shut it down. And we, it took us nine years. Panchayati Raj elections, suddenly the Indian government landed up right in the village. We had Pradhan sitting in the village, managing budgets of a crore, informing us exactly who the terrorists were. Students going to Bombay, to Karnataka, coming back and saying, you know what? Actually, there's opportunity here. So we gave the kids in Jammu and Kashmir a vision. And it was working. 
And then in 2014, the Indian government did something that inflicted a huge, huge strategic cost on India. Essentially, there are four political parties in Kashmir. There's the BJP on the extreme right. There's the Congress, nationalist. There's the National Conference. There's the PDP. There's the Hurriyat. And then there's terrorists in Pakistan. The PDP was the instrument that brought young Kashmiri youngsters into the political process. And the day Mr. Narendra Modi made an alliance between the PDP and the BJP, he destroyed the PDP as an instrument that could bring youngsters into the political system. And the day he did that, he massively opened up space for the terrorists in Kashmir, and they came in. And you saw a massive increase in violence. The intelligence guys themselves in Jammu and Kashmir told me that large numbers of the PDP have suddenly gone towards the middle militants. When you take these strategic decisions to take a little bit of political advantage, you do tremendous damage to the country. Today, Jammu and Kashmir, the space in Jammu and Kashmir has been opened up, not only for the Pakistanis, for other players in the region. And it is going to impose a massive, massive strategic cost on India. Just one small decision. So when you go into the details of these things, the answers are not complicated. You talk to people, you give them hope, you give them a vision, it doesn't matter who they are, whether they're from UP, Kashmir, anywhere, they will engage with you. You build trust with them, they will engage with you. It's not complicated. The reason it doesn't, doesn't happen, those are complicated. What about the current strategic? Harsh, you want to ask the next questions? I think we've gotten quite a few questions. But about what amazed me, you know, Go ahead. sorry, <laughs> I, this, I'm passionate about this because, because for me, the Jammu Kashmir question is a very important question for our future. You know what amazed me was nine years of work going there, talking to people, nine years, 30 days destroyed. 30 days. And it just, it blew my mind. I was so sad. I was like, my God, nine years. And it can just be wiped out in 30 days. 